morning year 11. Today we're going to have a look at gravitational potential energy. Um, if you haven't had a chance to do the do now, please go back to the packet, do now, and then come back to the video for the answers. All right, so our first question number one asked, what quantity do we use to represent the stiffness of a spring? And this is the spring constant and we use the symbol k for that and it's measured in newtons per meter the extension of the spring is the change in its length so the difference between its initial length and its final length Um, what energy is stored by a spring with a spring constant of five newton meters, uh, sorry, newtons per meter that extends by two meters? And you were given the equation here. So we'll assume that we've already written the equation down, 0 0.5 ke. So that is 0 0.5 times the spring constant, which was five newtons per meter, times by two meters squared, which is the extension. Uh, we type that into a calculator and we should get 10 joules. 10 joules. Uh, the equation for kinetic energy, so EK equals 0 0.5 times mass times speed or velocity squared. So what happens to kinetic energy when mass is doubled? Well, if we double this, the energy doubles as well. So don't fall into the trap because last week, I, I'm sorry, last lesson I asked you about speed doubling because that's squared, it increases by a factor of four, but because it's not squared, if you double one, it simply doubles the energy. Let's move on to the next one. So here's our direct instruction. We're going to look at gravitational potential energy today. And I'm going to show you the two ways that we can represent it. So you might see it as GPE, which stands for gravitational potential energy. And to calculate the potential energy that an object has, we need to, need, need to know its mass. We need to know the gravitational field strength uh, which on earth is 9.8 and we need to know the change in height So when we're talking about moving up somewhere, it will be an increase in gravitational potential energy. If we move down something, it will be a decrease in gravitational potential energy. So this is quite a, quite a long thing to write. The best way to, to write this equation would be with an E with a little P next to it, so potential energy, and that is mass times gravity and I'm going to use a symbol we might not have seen before. This triangle is the Greek letter delta. This just means change in. So it's mass times gravity times change in height. Uh, our potential energy store will be in joules as it has been previously. Mass will be in kilograms. Gravitational field strength, uh, newtons per kilogram, and then the change in height must be in meters. Places we might get caught out, if somebody gives us grams, then we'll need to divide it by a thousand to get us to kilograms. If somebody were to give us centimeters, we'd have to divide by a hundred to get to meters. If somebody gave us kilometers, we'd have to times by a thousand to get back to meters. So be very, very careful about your units. It's definitely worth mentioning that G, gravitational field strength, on the Earth's surface is 9.8 newtons per 
kilogram. So 99% of the questions we'll get will be based on Earth, but they might try and catch you up by putting it on the Moon, in which case they'll provide you with a new gravitational field strength, which will be somewhere in the region of 1.6. They might put you on Mars, that will give you a gravitational field strength of... I think 3.7 if they put you on Jupiter that will be 38 newtons per kilogram but usually it's going to be 9.8 for Earth so let's have a look at this mountain here so this is the this is the Matterhorn so this is a, is a mountain that I climbed back back in the day uh, its height so if you climb it from sea level is 4,400 and 78 meters so it's quite a big mountain about almost four and a half kilometers from sea level so if we were to climb all the way up from the sea to the peak our change in height would be four four seven eight meters if we went from the bottom to the top we would gain potential energy if we went from the top to the bottom, we'll lose that potential energy. Um, we're doing it on Earth, so that mountain's in between Italy and Switzerland, so that is in Earth. Uh, our gravitational field strength is going to be 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And when I climbed it, I was a little bit lighter than I am these days. My mass was about 80 kilograms. So I would like to work out how much potential energy I gained when I went from sea level all the way up to the top of this mountain. Uh, as always, I'll start off by writing the equation. So mass times gravity times change in height. You'll notice that I haven't put a multiplied symbol in between these. So if, it's, if it saves a bit of time, if it saves a bit of space, you can just assume that if two letters are next to each other with nothing in between them, they've been multiplied by one another. I'll put my equal sign directly underneath. I then need to substitute in my values. So my mass was 80 kilograms times by gravitational field strength, which was 9.8, and then times by the height through which I climbed. So from sea level, I did 4, 4, oops. Seven eight meters. We'll type that in. Eighty times nine point eight times four four seven eight. That gives me three million five hundred and ten thousand seven hundred and fifty two. And because it's an energy, it is going to be J. For joules. So um, you might notice that this is to this is to seven significant figures, which is way too much. Um, this is to four significant figures. This is to two significant figures, and this is also to two. So I'd put this to two significant figures. So that rounds three and a half million joules. Sounds like a large amount of energy, but I'm quite heavy and I'm, in, I'm going up quite a lot. So if you're only moving one or two meters, it will be a lot lower than this. If you're moving an object that is a lot less massive than me, then you'll notice that that increase is, is less as well. Uh, you might also have to work out, you might get given the potential energy and have to work out one of these other things. So we could, we could make our lives a little bit easier if we were that way inclined by putting everything into a triangle. Uh, potential energy is on its own in the equation, so that goes at the top. So you've got mass times gravity times change in height. <clears throat> that means if we wanted to work out mass, uh, we would do potential energy divided by gravity times height. So let's jot that down. Mass is potential energy over gravity times 
change in height. If we wanted to work out gravity, that would be potential energy divided by mass times change in height. Not a very good E. And then the last one, change in height would be potential energy divided by mass times gravity. So these are three equations that you might find useful. Hopefully you can read those despite the handwriting. So here's an example of the sort of question you may have to complete. We have a gentleman who is doing some pull-ups. He has a mass of 85 kilograms. Gravitational field strength is 9.8. When he goes from stage one to stage two, he's moving a center of mass. So we're interested in the center of his mass, which is probably about there. So it goes from this site to this height. And that change in height is 0 0.63 meters. Calculate the increase in his gravitational potential store. So we want to know the gravitational potential energy. We always have to write the correct equation, substitute in the values, calculate the answer, give the correct unit every time. So step one, write the correct equation. So the equation we've been using is potential energy is mass times gravitational field strength times change in height. Write the equal sign directly underneath, substitute in the values. So mass was 85 kilograms. Gravitational field strength 9.8 newtons per kilogram and finally the change in height 0 0.63 meters and they've been nice to us in this question it's given us kilograms newtons per kilograms and meters so we don't have to mess around with any units we don't have to rearrange any equations I'm going to type this into the calculator 85 times 9.8 times 0 0.63 and that gives me 524.79 oh, that's not very good no and the unit would be joules and I'm looking at this number and that's a lot, a lot of significant figures I've got two sig figs here two sig figs here and two sig figs here. That suggests to me that I need to round my response to two significant figures. So that would be 520 joules. And I would underline it to show the examiner that that's what he's marking. Okay, year 11. So this next question is one for you. Do exactly what we did previously, write the correct equation, Substitute in the values, calculate the answer, and then give the correct unit. Uh, it looks relatively straightforward. They haven't tried to catch you out with any unit, so it's meters, kilograms, newtons per kilogram. Give this a go, please. Okay, well done for that last one. We're going to practice what we've just learned. So these should all be similar to the ones we've carried out. There are one or two interesting things that might cause you problems. So have a look in particular at questions three and questions four. They're trying to catch you out with units so be careful with that one. On the next task we're not just going to use the EP equals mg delta h equation. We need to decide which equation to use. Uh, we had the option of potential energy is mg delta h if we're working out mass we had potential energy over g times delta h had to think about that if we're working out g it is potential energy oops potential energy over mass times change in height And 
And if we work up to my H. There we go. And if we work in our change in height, that would give us potential energy divided by um, a mass times gravity. So you need to decide which of these four equations you need to use for each one. We'll go through this first one together actually. So calculate the height that a weightlifter raises an 80 kilogram mass if she transfers 1600 joules of energy to the mass. So it's nice and easy, they've even highlighted what we used for. Height starts with H, so we're going to use this equation here. So our change in height is potential energy over mass times gravity. So potential energy is 1,600, <clears throat> 80 kilograms times by G. Now this is another problem. We need to put a G in, but it hasn't been hasn't been told to us in the question. Uh, we can make a safe assumption here. This person is lifting weights. It's probably not going to be somebody in space. So we'll assume that it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Type that into our calculator. And that gives us 2.04 meters. And that kind of seems sensible. And I'll probably round that to 2.0. <clears throat> we know this is sensible because if you think about a weightlifter, they're going to pick the mass up off the floor and they're going to lift it above their heads. Most people are around 170 to 190 centimetres. So if they hold something right at the top of their head, it's probably going to be about two metres. So I'd be happy with that. Always give your answer a bit of a common sense check. If this had said 200 metres, that's probably going to be wrong. Okay, once you've completed everything, have a go at the quiz.